come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that reviews movies mm. every Saturday night. Well, we talk about them. Funny. We <laughs> analyze we movies. We tear them apart. We build them up. We take them down. <laughs> really depends on the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to listen to 282 episodes. This is it, episode 282. <gasps> 282? We're getting Boy. there. We're getting there. That's right. We've been doing this for a long time. We hope you'll check out our back catalog on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or wherever great podcasts are found. And please give us a review, a like, subscribe, give us a star rating. If you give us a review, we'll read it later on in Igor's mailbag. Yeah. Colin had a mullet when we started this podcast. Look at him now. He's a beautiful, beautiful man. <laughs> He's been going on for that long. But <laughs> it's all going <laughs> back in the front. Right. That's that's not right. It doesn't it just all slides back. Yeah. 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 It just yeah. Gets longer than I think that's it what you gotta falls. do, right? When you're like yeah. it's that male insecurity when you start losing your hair up front, you grow it out in the back. Yeah. Oh, I'm totally gonna do no. it. Oh, that's a bad that's, strategy. That. No, that's a bad strategy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't see I got a fresh haircut today. There's a reason for that. Yeah, don't hogan it. No, don't do that. That's yeah. Bandana yeah. all yeah. the time. Well, that's, well, that's a commitment kind of idea. too. Yeah. yeah. There you go. You, you're gonna get into the bandana phase of your. <laughs> There's gotta be it's like something. Corn husk hair. The cowboy hat. It's like it's, it's like, like silky. Oh, please it's wear like a cowboy hat. Like, you know, like Barbie. Like hair? Barbie hair. Yeah. Why does Hulk Hogan? Have why Barbie is his hair, hair like silky, like a husk? <laughs> 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 like what, what's that quote from "It's Always Sunny, Skin of a Hot Dog, Hair of a Chinese"? <laughs> so can, so can hair of a Chinese man. There it is. There it is. Where's the "Oh, It's Always Sunny" reference on this week's episode? Uh, so who are these people who are talking at you? The internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. Allie. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin, what we watched tonight? Tonight we watched 1988's remake of The Blob. The Blob. So actually, the original was made in 1958. Mm, yeah. The remake was years. made in 1988. 30 years. And we're talking about it in 2018. <gasps> oh, look what you did. Oh, look what you did. We are due for oh, a remake shit. right now. There was going to be one that Rob Zombie was a part oh, of. Oh, Jesus. Please, Fucking no. Christ, let's, no. Let's no, he gave not. up on it. And no. Then, then it went to just Stalin people Winter? getting eaten by a blob. Then the blob would have been the hero in that movie. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. why I'm like, how would you remake this thing again? Because of the anniversary, that's it. That's literally yeah. the only reason. Well, well, basically, well, that's got to be it at this well, point. Well, his wife would play the blob. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh, zing. It's, no, no, why, it's, no, no nothing star. against her, against him. Again, he would just make it happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she would be the young love interest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The hero of the blob, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yay. The heroic. Uh, this movie was directed by Chuck Russell. Chuck. Chuck Russell. This was his second movie. Sounds like, if they ain't, if they ain't a trucker. sounds like a fake name. If they ain't a trucker name. <laughs> He's from Chicago. Oh, well, he sounds help? like he should be wrestling at the, uh, the top tournament. Like doesn't he? a lot of and cheese. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Chuck, Chuck Russell. Russell had prior to this done A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. Okay. okay. All right. And so that One was kind of, of you know, ones. you got to start off with the visual effects heavy uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And then sure. uh, after this, he did The Mask. The Mask. Really? Like Jim Carrey? The, mask? the Jim Carrey wow. the mask. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I was about to say Rocky Dennis mask. Or... <laughs> not, <laughs> not, 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 not mask. Okay. Not mask. Not mask. The mask. I was very confused for a second there. I was like, oh, God. Where are we well, you got to go with the visual effects yeah. thing. He's a visual effects Well, guy. Rocky yeah. Dennis yeah. had some horrifying visual effects. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> True. Yeah. Who did that makeup? What are we talking about? Mask with Cher, right? That one? Yeah, and Eric Stoltz, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that yeah. one. Mm. There's, a, what are, there's no other one, right? Yeah. There's the mask, there's mask, and then that's it. There's yeah. mirror mask, too. Mirror mask. I don't know what that the is. The Dave McKeon movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, are we just uh, going to start listing mask movies? Yeah, Man yes. in the Iron Mask. The yeah, Son yeah. of the Mask. The Son of the Mask with Jamie <laughs> Kennedy. Uh, <laughs> and then he did uh, Eraser with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, sweet. Okay, yeah. I dig oh, wow. that. I dig and then after that, I think he just kind of went, well, I think he did Scorpion King. It's not good. Yeah. yeah. And then I don't okay. think he's done anything. I think uh, he did something with John Travolta, which the name of which escapes me. I like mean, 14. There was a 14 year gap. Chuck Russell. In the, the writing, uh, the, the directing. John Travolta. What movie was that? <sighs> okay, Captain oh, Google's looking, on I'm, the I'm case. I'm curious. Who wrote really this movie, Colin? Uh, this movie was written by Chuck Russell. Oh. And, and Frank Darabont. Frank Darabont. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Didn't know That's that. Right. Well, it's because those two guys wrote uh, Elm Street 3. Sure. 
Yep. And then went on. Well, Frank Darabont <gasps> became a, a successful, you know, writer director himself. <laughs> Uh-oh. He did uh, the Green Mile, the Shawshank Redemption, and the, what was the one with Jim Carrey with the the movie theater? Oh, the, the Majestic, Majestic. Yeah. yeah, and then he was showrunner briefly on The Walking Dead until they very fired briefly, him because yeah. uh, he wanted to run it like a movie and it's TV. It's a very different, very different thing. Different. <laughs> yeah, the uh, John Travolta movie he did is is a really bad movie called I Am Wraith, uh, which is famous for more. It has a really horribly photoshopped poster where oh. John Travolta's head is like twice the size of his body. I remember that. Uh, this Wait, is, is it Wraith or Wrath? This is, uh, oh, I Am Wrath, yeah. yeah this is the more, that. this is away. the better version. This is the more cleaned up version. It went away. Oh. It went away. I remember that. New I remember. phone. Yeah. mikayla has got a new phone. Yeah, sorry guys, new phone. Oh, <laughs> yep, okay. That. Yeah, okay. There's, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a poster that, that is even worse that I will, I will see if I can find for you Yeah. Guys. But yeah, that's why I was like, oh God, not this movie. Mm, yeah, not that, great. That's unfortunate because he had such a strong start. Yeah. You know? Not great. Ooh, Chuck was, Russell or yeah, John yeah. Travolta? Yeah. Chuck, Chuck didn't, Russell. Didn't Darabont also do uh, The Mist? He did. Yeah. He did yeah. The Mist? Okay. Well, he's a Stephen King fan. Yes, he is. Because uh, I think he got his start. Darabont started by making a short called The Woman in the Room, which is based on a Stephen King short story. So in this movie, you got a guy named Flag. Which mm-hmm. is the yeah? I was like, is that, uh, is that Randall Flagg's brother? <laughs> he spends time with the can man instead of the trash can man, yep. right? Uh, the heroine's last name is Penny, Meg Penny, mm-hmm. Pennywise. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it just keeps on going. Actually, that may be where it, may be where where it, it stops. stops. Yeah. Uh, so the blob. So this is a remake of a 1958 movie. The 58 film is most uh, famous for starring. Steve McQueen. Yeah, Steve yeah. McQueen's in that. Which I think was his first movie. I think so. Mm. Sure. He was still a kid before this, before Wanted, Dead or Alive, and uh, eventually Dead Med- Magnificent Seven and all yeah. that, Great yeah, Escape. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that sounds, sounds right. right. Have any of you guys seen the Steve McQueen, The Blob? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. Yes. I enjoyed it. I have not. Yeah. When was the? Have you seen it recently? I'm curious no, how it holds. Uh, nope. Yeah, what's the blob look like in that one? I'd say it's, it's been like, a hot 15 years since I saw it. Cherry it. Jello. Yeah, more uh, and more. Yeah, yeah, like a slower. It just leaks it's, to it. It's goopy. Places? It's, okay. it's it's very jello. No, the molasses, molasses jello mold. It's it a look, molasses jello mold. It looks like the molasses a disaster more than anything in that <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and it. I if I remember correctly, it starts off kind of like a pale color and turns like this blood red. Mm-hmm. You know, as it, it gets eats really people. dark. Sure. Yeah, it goes really red, which was kind of missing from this one. It, Where it starts it, out a certain way. And it goes start, well, way. this one started out looking like a big ball of snot and ended up, you know, being this big pink, you know, lumpy thing. Yeah, and there's more texture to this blob. Than yeah, there far was more. In the first one. Yeah, the first one's very smooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very yeah. smooth. Yeah, it literally just looks like it's smooth, like Jello. Yeah, it has yeah. a Jello texture. texture yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure somebody was making just Jello molds and mm-hmm. putting it on screen. Well, probably. Just, yeah. Because it's all like that miniature stuff where yeah. it's like, you know, they yeah, just push it through. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> like, it, like what you do with jello when you push it through your teeth. Just. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of how it operates in that movie is it kind of just fills You up did rooms, it. You know it. You know? I know. I still do it. If you, <laughs> yeah, it's well, fun. <laughs> if you guys have seen, so this is another uh, opportunity for a musical cut in here. If you've seen the original Blob, then ah. you've heard the amazing theme song, Beware the Blob. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I think they put on like every single uh, like Halloween music I compilation. Don't, oh, don't yeah. know if I've heard I think this. So. All right, take it away, Holly. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Beware the blob. Yeah, I'm find this. Oh, it's hilarious because it's, it's like a, a 1950s like uh, I don't know. It's like a pop kind of 1950s. What do you call it? Like jingle. Yeah, kind of. It's mm-hmm. catchy. It sticks in your head. I think it was written by Burt Bacharach. Bacharach <laughs> I'm Ladies and gentlemen, Burt Bacharach. That's right. Who everybody knows from Austin <laughs> Powers. Mr. Burt Bacharach. But he wrote Raindrops Keep Falling on My yeah, Head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he wrote, he doesn't sing the theme song, but uh, Sean is capping and Googling this. So you're going to have to hear a little bit of this listener because it's a, one of the most fantastic the blob theme, theme songs song. oh, this is, of all time. Be wonderful. And there was a sequel. Which I can't remember if it was called Beware the Blob or Son of, Son of the Blob, which was directed by Larry Hagman. What? Larry, Larry Hagman? Hagman? Shut up. Who's like, Larry Hagman? Hey, Larry from, Hagman? From Bewitched? Yes. <laughs> what? Yes. No, no, no. Or no, I Dream of Genie. I dream sorry, of Genie. Oh, sorry. I, dream I, dream I knew Genie. what you were talking I dream about. Of Genie. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah. Dallas. Yeah. yeah. Really? Because they re. re- Ha, ha, ha. 
You gotta get to the chorus, though. Yeah, I was gonna say, how long does this... <laughs> it's a long intro. I think it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> It's very like <laughs> like 1950s lounge like cocktail party. There you yeah, go. yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> like there is a tray of hors d'oeuvres being passed right now. Right. Yeah, uh-huh. There's definitely a, a fishbowl with keys in it. Too. Yes, there is. Like, this should have showed up on Mad Men. At some yeah. Point. yeah, yeah. I think I like the green slime better because it's more like a rock kind right. of uh, Rocky, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this, this is, one uh, relax by the pool. Yeah, yeah. This is the opening to a horror movie. If you can imagine that. Like that. It's like that thing you do. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Are we doing the whole thing? We're doing the whole I mean, thing. Yeah, you don't have to play the whole thing. <laughs> uh, Son of the Blob <laughs> okay. was that's re-released. Wonderful. Son of the Blob. After, so well, it has I offspring. Think it, I think that's what it's called. So, so it's either it, that's, what's, that's in the jar. It can reproduce. That's what's in yeah. the jar. All right. And ew, ew. it seems to me that you guys are. Oh God. <laughs> That's like a sperm donor jar. That's gross. I don't like that. Is there a possibility the blob is some kind of alien wad from space? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Yeah. That's what it posits. Not in this movie. Because it's apparently a bacteria that, unless. Well, spoilers. Unless the wad got onto the bacteria. Yeah. It's well, some kind of it's alien space. goo. Things happen. Can we stop calling it the wad? <laughs> the wad. <laughs> he started. <laughs> the wad. Uh, That's. I'm not going to. Yeah, let's Never just, mind. just, let's just move on. Just All right. On. So the first one, I guess, to compare and contrast, the first one, the whole tone of it is basically that. Uh, that. What is the paranoia of the first one? Like, what is? Because it's germ warfare in this one. In the first one, it is, it is just, just is an it alien the Russian thing. sending shit over. Is mm. that, no, no, it's just oh, it's a foreign, creature from space. Yeah, okay. yeah. But they the, kept it simple in the fifties. Right. They didn't want to confuse yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, because I think like the major. It seems like there's an alien thing. You know, a meteor falls to Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, an old guy picks it up. It gets on his hand. Steve McQueen and his girlfriend hit the guy with their car because they're on Lover's Lane. They take him to a hospital. He uh, deteriorates. So then they call the cops in, and that becomes the major like contention in the movie is that the cops just don't understand kids and don't believe a word that they say, mm-hmm. even though the kids are like, there's something out there. You don't understand it. And it yeah. seems like there's a bunch of scenes that are basically like the kids trying to say, like, you know. We yeah. actually know what's happening, man. Which I mean, as far as <laughs> as far as like remakes go, they did a good job mirroring it in this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They really did. And and it's fortunate for them that like the eighties were still a time where like a lover's lane thing was believable. Yeah. Whereas like nowadays yeah. I think it's like it's more of a Netflix and chill situation than a, like a lover's mm. lane, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I don't know how you would get people out. You'd have say, to find motivation for them to leave the house. You what's know? The, what's the equivalent of a lover's lane nowadays? Blood's point. In, a, in a place where you don't have <laughs> You're young enough where you don't, don't have your own. <laughs> you don't have your own place. And you yeah, have to go somewhere. If you're 16 years old and you can't Netflix be at home, where thing. do you like, go? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, if I think at this point, <laughs> listeners, at this point, somebody, us. some friend you have has parents who are never around. I think that's or the don't culture care nowadays. or they're cool parents, right? Yeah, and that's yeah, where you that's can go. legit. Somebody's got a basement. They that's rather legit. have you or the parents don't care, so you find that friend. You're like, yes, that parent. That parent is like, well, I'd rather have you do it in the house. You know that, right? Yeah, the cool mom. The cool mom. More permissive. Like, do it here, and you're gonna drink. I'd rather you do it in the house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. So you just kind of, yeah. I don't know. There I mean, they're, they're, yeah. I'm sure that the kids out there are like finding some dark, secluded, you know, whatever, woodsy alley, botanical. I don't know. So the forest so preserve, like the a botanical. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to the trees, going to the trees, trees, trees and stuff. <laughs> yeah, where do they go? I don't know. We're gonna go to the butterfly farm. That's yeah. where we're going. Let us know so uh, we can update our uh, uh, database. You ever uh, been to the like, farm? <laughs> 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 it's got the danglies and shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think that's a prerequisite of that, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so uh, both of the movies also contain a scene in a movie theater where the blob goes crazy and uh, yeah. blobs all over people. Run, don't walk from the blob. Are there any other scenes that are mirrored in the... Uh, that's the that's trailer. In the tr- that's the original was, trailer. Yeah. yeah. Holly and I were actually Run, talking off mic, but like, more of our blob. memories about the blob actually come from Greece than the actual yes. movie, the blob. Oh, the first the, one? Yeah, because they go, when they go to the drive-in, they show the full trailer. 
The for whole the you see the whole trailer <laughs> yeah. for the blob. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like that is burned into my brain. Like oh, yeah, oozing it, through the doors. It, Come on, don't the doors. Walk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. my picture. Yeah. Like I I watched it like I said like fifteen years ago. I don't really remember. I remember Greece. I remember Greece. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not even like you see the backs of the characters' heads watching it. No, you're full on on the screen just watching oh, the yeah. trailer for the blob and then Yeah, you're there for it. Yeah. Huh. Same <laughs> producer or something. Somebody owed somebody Could a be. favor. We were actually saying it's actually kind of uh we we we're nerds, so we noticed this. It's kind of good storytelling because the timeline line up with when the blob came out uh, when Greece takes place yeah. it yeah. actually works it in works in yeah so yeah. I was like holy shit they kind yeah, of did the, the, the con- effort into this yes. the continuity in Greece is surprisingly accurate <laughs> yeah <laughs> believe it or not it, it really is that the blob was uh, it was released as a bottom end of a double bill with uh, I Married a Monster from Outer Space oh so that, that makes was, sense yeah, yeah. yeah. So sounds like fine both. how does one do that that was how they used to release movies, I think. But the no, no, eight, I mean, how do you marry a monster from outer oh, space? Oh, uh, we would have to watch the film. Maybe that's yeah. next week's movie. Who knows? Do we don't even tuned? know. Not, yeah. Not. Uh, they, so just, just watch it right now, huh, Sean? Just, just kill the suspense. <laughs> Thanks. It's, uh, it's not. It's not. <laughs> um, so this movie, 1988, we've updated yeah. everything. So now, uh, how have we? How did people altered? die in the original? Oh, uh, they just. Uh, Get they just absorbed by it. Yeah, they. Just, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that episode of The Simpsons? Uh, it's like a Treehouse of Horror, where like I think it's Homer gets like a big. He becomes like a big Jello man, just absorbs. Uh, I think. Yeah, I or, think no, so. There's yeah, like a, there's something like. Yeah, that. or there's a Futurama episode like that. It's one of the two. Whatever. Uh, it's Futurama. like that. It's just okay. they get sucked into Jello. <laughs> yeah, and they kill it by. Well, there's. I remember that the, it ends up surrounding a diner, and they're all in the diner. And I think they use fire extinguishers on it because they determine that it, it can't stand the cold. Mm-hmm. And they spray it down, and then they put it in a container, and they airlift it to the Arctic. Mm-hmm. And they drop it off. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the end of the yep. blob. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a simple movie. Mm-hmm. What's I said they kept, they kept it simple back then, <laughs> man. Yeah, didn't want to scare those fifties folks. Yeah. They had enough fears like with the Russians. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was invasion from, I suppose, any invasion movie can be read as like a Cold War kind of oh, you know, sure. thing. Oh, for sure. Well, whatever yeah. Outside yeah. Force. It's going to come over and it's going to absorb all of your whatever. There's you always know, some, for ideas. every generation, all of your traditions. Yeah, something. your traditions. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to eat it's them. It's going to take your culture from you. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Eventually, the only thing that will be left There'll is be a blob. nothing left. Mm-hmm. So, question number one. Is the blob, a, the original, then, uh, like, sacred or is it a movie that you are okay with them remaking. I'm fine with it. Fine with it. You haven't seen it. I haven't seen the original, but like, I'm pretty if, sure I'd be fine with it. If they could justify old. a 2018 version, I'd be fine with it too. I probably would be too. Yeah. As long as it's Actually. not Rob Zombie. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, they could justify it. I'm yeah. 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 With, yeah. Uh, with another blob. Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody out there probably could. I'm sure you know they were working on it for a while, but then abandoned mm-hmm. it. So I mean, there was some you know movement toward doing it again. Um, I mean, this is pretty good. The stuff they do in this movie is just like well, you could do. You're that saying effects now. wise, effects wise, um, uh, what they, how they, I guess how they kill characters and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I think, yeah, there's. I don't know. How do you improve on something like this? I'm sure you could little bits here and there, but what about the, okay? Pretty well, good in this movie. What was the name of the guy that directed um, the Evil Dead remake and Don't Breathe? Fanny Fanny Alvarez. Alvarez. Yeah, I'd be uh, down for him doing a blob remake. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be awesome. Just a really like. Bloody blob. Yeah. 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 Well, this one's kind of goopy. It, it is gross. very goopy. It's gross. And it's got some gross moments. It's got some blood and some limbs being ripped apart and people just like being dissolved and shit. Yeah. Like it yeah. did good. I mean, what is And it yeah. moves with speed. Like it can really move with speed when it needs to in yeah. this movie. And I like that. Like mm-hmm. it's shooting up the air vent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shooting Bring. up the air vent, taking over the phone booth pretty yeah. quickly. Um, smushing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Moving into yeah. the, the open car when the door's yeah. open. You know, I uh-huh. like the quickness of the blob. Well, this is foreign. What is it rated? Lurching up out of 15? a... Sorry, what? It was rated R. Okay. So oh, lurching up out of a drain and grabbing a guy by the head yeah. and pulling him down head first into a, into just, a, <laughs> yeah. like a sink drain. Yeah. And then just blood and limbs getting sucked down mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. I wonder it's if there was stuff cut out of that. Because in the 80s, it feels the like, MPAA was like, no, blood, you can't have... It feels oh, like that they, was there like was the a, height of the MPAA. So, yeah. yeah, they were like at full force at that point in time. Feels like there was more like looking down at the sink and showing more things being sucked in rather than just the shot of like above the sink, things going down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure like, it was there. When his head went in, yeah. that was the yeah. grossness for me. Yeah. Like the yeah. crunch cool. and like the, oh. oh. Yeah, this yeah. is a little pulp. That left. was solid. Yeah. yeah. It was just a little dent in the pipe. Yep. Yeah. Poof. 
Yeah, Man, they did some good stuff in this movie. And they it did. still looks really good. It does it still does. look good. Well, that's my. It does. See, this is the thing where, where I was, you know, bringing this in tonight. I haven't seen it in a while, uh, and uh, because I think Twilight Time put it out on Blu-ray, and that you know, this is one of those deals where it's thirty bucks and it goes up to like one hundred and twenty, and then more than that if you want to buy it now. Right, because there's only like two thousand of those available. Yeah. Twilight Time doesn't release. So I missed a lot. it. And I was yeah. like, damn it! But Umbrella uh, in the UK put it out, and it turns out that it's region free. So this was oh, I was nice. holding off for tonight to actually watch the uh, the movie again. Uh, I was curious how, like, I mean, it's colored by nostalgia to me, but I was curious how, like, these effects were going to actually hold up to yeah. you guys. Because mm-hmm. uh, you got you two hadn't, uh, Michaela and Holly hadn't seen the movie before. Right? No, no, never. No, I'd never no. seen it. It was delightful. It, yeah. Delightful experience. Yeah, no, I, it was solid. I had a lot of, uh, a lot of Slither vibes yeah. going yeah. on, yeah. Yeah. which, you know, I love. <laughs> and right. some Night of the Creeps. Night of the Creeps. some Night of the Creeps, Colin, Colin absolutely. Taste. When it comes to certain things like this, and I could see in this movie, yeah, it's also kind of got that fun like it, it's got a fun still fifties vibe to it. Yes, just it based does. On the effects, because of the way they com- I guess composite the blob in some scenes, mm-hmm. yeah, like, it's not it's not flawless, but I think it adds to like the atmosphere of the movie that it's not. It, it it's, has a certain it, it, charm it to it. Look, a charm. Yeah, yes. it has a certain charm You're to saying it. It's like the blue screen, is blue screen work. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can always tell. You can see that outline around mm-hmm. the blob. Yeah, that, yeah. that yeah. says yeah. it's not there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think it works for it. It gives I do, it kind I of do some too. otherworldliness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where you know you're seeing a miniature in a. You know, composited in yeah, a bigger right. scene, and like to the fifties charm. Like we talked about, how like the wraith was very confusing as to like its time frame because mm-hmm. there was like certain things that were very nineteen fifties and others that were very eighties. This movie just took like influence from the fifties, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and it worked really well. It really actually. did. It made sense and it felt natural. Like the lovers' lane stuff felt very natural. And, yeah, like, uh, subtlety is is the you know the way to handle it, unlike the way the wraith did. You know, like, yeah. Oh, and everyone wears roller skates and works at a burger shop. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and this is where they all hang. Out, you know, <laughs> well, long, some you of know? it I wonder is you know it's going for that kind of like the quote unquote wholesome American small town feel, right? Yeah. It takes place in the summer. All the you know guys are on the football team, and all the girls are cheerleaders, Letterman and, jackets and whatnot. And yeah, they got the one tough who's got the leather jacket, <laughs> and the yeah. long the kid Sigourney from, Weaver hair. That's sweat. He's gotta be sweating so oh, bad. Uh, right? You know, like, this is the great Kevin Dillon. We're the talking great, about. The yeah. Colin. Take well, that back. I mean, the Kevin Dillon from Platoon? Oh, God. Okay. No. From Entourage? There you go. <laughs> the lesser Dillon? <laughs> yeah, the lesser Dillon. By a long shot. Too. By a long shot. Yeah. He plays our hero, Randall Flagg. Was it a surprise to you that... It's uh, not Randall Flagg. Uh, sorry, Brian Flagg. Brian Flagg. There I don't you know go. if you can have a tough guy who's named Brian. <laughs> <sighs> Do you know? Fair point. Brian, yeah. you need a stronger name than that. You know, yeah. it's just flag, <laughs> just flag, flag. And a just, good name, though. it just furthers uh, Michaela's theory that who is the actual hero in this movie? The Blobs, the Blob. I think it is. I mean, I was rooting for it for a while. I was there. too. <laughs> Were you guys um, surprised at all, or was it basically telegraphed that uh, the Donovan Ledich character, the other, the jock kid, the mm-hmm. football player, mm-hmm. uh, was? Out of the movie, like within fifteen minutes. Oh, I was kind of surprised. That was by a surprise that, to me. I, I did not. I, I actually didn't... no, because we, we kind of made a comment about that during the movie. How like they were just like freely killing their characters, and That's I kind I of love loved that. Yeah, what they do in this movie. Yeah, just people. They introduce people. And they're like, oh, these are nice people. You think in most movies, there's been like they have to come together as a group and figure out a way to defeat this. Yeah. And, and more so in this movie, they're just like, all right, you're here for a little bit. We like you. Oh, you're dead now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You go to the phone booth and you get squished. Like the, and we're like, oh, the sheriff's, yeah. the sheriff's already, dead. already dead. The sheriff's already dead. The sheriff's already dead. He just comes, you know, globbing <laughs> yeah. up to the phone booth and you're just like, oh, oh he went to the diner and there That was he is fantastic. The I'm just like, yes. That was kill fantastic. Him off. And Let usually him for us, it's really annoying to have a character like that die off screen, mm-hmm. but they revealed it in a way that yeah. was so well done that yeah. we were all fine with it. Yeah, it was like, know? ooh, cool. Yeah, it was really great. Mm-hmm. And that's Jeffrey Dimon. One who played Dale on The Walking Dead. Dale. Mm-hmm. Wasn't oh, he yeah. in Shawshank? Sweet Dale. Right. I'm sure he was in Shawshank. Sweet Dale. He's been a bunch of stuff. I think he he's was... in The Mist. Because he's been in like all Frank Darabont Wasn't he stuff. in like The Green Mile? Yes. Yeah, yeah. he was in there The Green Mile. Was, yeah. Uh, and Candy Clark is uh, the uh, waiter. Uh, or the, sorry, waitress. the uh, waitress yeah. at, the, uh, at the diner. But there's something about the writing in these scenes then. Because mm-hmm. it, it sets up like, you know, because you're saying that basically these characters exist only to be fodder for the blob. Yeah, but, but they don't read that way at all. Dim- no, yeah. right. But they are weirdly dimensional exactly. for fodder. Like, it's and, fantastic. Yeah, and that's what I love about it. It's mm-hmm. like, 
I don't know. Like I, I liked their story together, and I liked watching both of them, both together and separate on yeah. screen. But like, yeah, no, I just didn't see it coming, and I was yeah. just like, we're really? pretty educated in like I think, the tropes yeah. of movies, and we didn't mm. see it coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, there was only one character that I kind of knew was gonna die, and I was excited that he was gonna die. <laughs> was Who's the, that? Was the fucking date rape boyfriend? <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't wait for this motherfucker to die. Right. And it was with spectacular. His, with his trunk. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, the trunk. Oh, the trunk. Colin, you have the to, trunk of rape. You have Let's, to post a picture of the trunk. You have to. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to. Because like trunk, our, man. our description of this trunk will not do it justice. There's like red fur on no, the inside. No, this is the date rape mobile. And there's like, like a full bar set up. A full bar. A it had full like bar. It was like vodka and Hawaiian punch yep. and like all of the shit. A, b- a bucket of strawberries. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bucket of strawberries. It yep. was amazing. He had a, he had a little like, battery operated yeah. mixer. Yeah, he had a hand mixer. He had a hand mixer. It was insane. <laughs> but it was like a grimy, like '70s swinger bar. You know, yeah. like he had that kind of Extra vibe too. Red fur and, and disco ball. Well, from instead yeah. of that though, he had the, the basketball. basketball. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's very true. And he had the box <laughs> full of class rings. Oh, that the was box full of oh, class yeah. rings. That was the final touch, man. We that all was audibly little were detail. like, oh, when we saw that, because because the girl in the car is like, the girl in the car is wearing his ring, and then it shows this fucking box full of goddamn class. Right. Well, little details like that, that, creepy that, that as will hell. fill you in on what kind of people these what, that what was kind of a, person these people that are. detail was wonderful yeah, that was well and that's his motive yeah. too is like well you're wearing my ring so you're my you girl kind of so like you know, <laughs> that's, that's his you know oh man book. Fucking creep. Oh, and like yeah, they But you liked when he died. That was the uh, That was yeah. one <laughs> of my favorite death scenes. That was, that was amazing. I loved it. Because you think she's passed out from drinking too much. She's no. not. She's, She's not. Blobbed. She got blobbed. Yeah. That's what I said. Oh, the blob's a hero because he kills the date rapist. Yeah. So blob's blob's doing blob's the hero, favor. man. Doing the Lord's work. Time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe the blob, you know, is here for a reason. Let's and, just, you know, yeah. And that, that and the way that the way it was it was choreographed was fantastic because her face like starts sinking in and mm. it like comes through her face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that like, was amazing. Well, grabs out? his hand because yeah. he tries yeah. to grab her boob and like and sucks him in. Oh, that was great. What'd you think of blob? Tentacles. Loved it. Okay. Love it. I mean, it, it makes uh, sense. Thing. Yeah. It was very yeah. thingy. Very thing. Mm-hmm. I guess that's the thing. That, like when I saw it, it was like, what? It has arms? Because mm-hmm. it ends up having like appendages that it can right. like. It has a know. mouth at one point. But it's too. a blob. So it's, you know, yeah. it can turn into various forms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stretch itself yeah, it's out. A, it's a shifter. Single you tentacles. Know? Yeah. It uh, keeps you guessing. Mm-hmm. It can grab you at any time. Yeah. And I like how at one point it does really just like fly swat a man on the sidewalk. <laughs> that, great. that was amazing. Well, what sells it is when he pe- when it peels up, yeah. it's got and like his silhouette. Yeah, or whatever. he's like yeah. stuck to it. Yeah. Oh, it's, or when it's fantastic. Trying to go under doors, and it's just like five tongues have gone under doors, and yes. they're just yeah. looking yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, so gross. That's good. It gives it's you opportunity great. to do things. I think I said there was absolutely no gelatinous uh, material used in the creation of the blob. It's all what they call it, like. Uh, they're all like it's it's a puppet somehow or like mm-hmm. it's like uh yeah. it's fabric that's covered in some kind of shiny wow. shit. But yeah, that's wow, the only well way they done. said they could wow. pose it. Yeah. Was by making it so it's a bunch of like drapes. You and know, stuff. I it it, it looks like it's gonna be you remember when we were kids and we would get like those like like squishy toys from the toy store, like the cheap ones yeah. Yeah. that had like the weird gel mm-hmm. around it. Mm-hmm. Where it doesn't actually stick to anything, it's just squishy. Yeah. I think that's kind of what it was. That's kind of what it seemed like. The transparency they were able to achieve and, like, the texture. You know, you can kind of see through it most of the time when you see it. So, like, the fact they were able to achieve that with it being, like, kind of a puppet mechanism is incredible. But there's that one. So, the the hero jock character who gets killed off, like, in the first 15 minutes of the movie, uh, he gets uh, blobbed in this doctor's office where they take the old trash can man. And yeah. I, it, it's like the, whatever they're doing, they're like pulling this sheet of blob shit, yeah. like so tight on this guy's face that yeah. it looks like his eyelids oh, are actually I, being no, yeah. pulled back. Yeah. As you know, the thing is so tight because his nose is yeah. all upturned. It looks, you know, like, he could not cool. breathe. He could not. It breathe looks like, like it's, yeah. It looks back. like it's like pulling his face off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
It was great. Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. It was great, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. That's a, that'd be a freaky thing to walk into. Just, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I was not expecting that when he like shot up and hit, it was pulling like his face off. That was amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, if they, Did not if they, see that coming. If they redid it now, like today, they could do that. I can see the bloodier version of it or the more horrific yeah. version of it where yeah. they're just pulling. It goes pulling a little more extreme, off? just pulling the skin totally off. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But that would For be sure. done in some kind of CG. Would, I was like, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. it's going to be CGI. But yeah. why? I mean, why? Why do you it? Know, if they, but if they could do it, you're saying the the more bloody version, the one where you actually get to sit there and watch, because yeah. this one achieves this effect through like at least three different angles, right? Yeah. yeah. One, you, you see the the stuff on the actual actor. Second one is a puppet, and the third one's the puppet that's got you know imploded. Right. So you have to at least cut away three times. Mm-hmm. In a modern movie, you could do it all in one shot, you know, yeah. probably, and actually see the stuff dissolving and pulling off. You know, it's like, but why? This is, I guess, what I'm still trying to understand is why practical effects still, to me, look so much better or more convincing. They do than uh, a CGI version where you can actually go further with your imagination and yeah. show like this is what it would actually look like if you were dissolved right. by a blob. Because I can't, because I can't walk shot. into a room and see that. I right. can't walk around the corner and look at that effect being done Mm -hmm. like that's got to be done elsewhere that's somebody else doing something else like stuff like this i can walk in i you know uh, you're sitting there filming it and you can see it being done on camera yeah but it's a movie i mean like movies are all illusion you're not actually looking at a guy being dissolved you know it's like but why does it you feel to you more realistic somehow than uh, you know, the, I mean, than the CG version. Of it. Technically, I mean, it is more realistic. Yeah, yeah. it is. I honestly is. think that the, the the dead giveaway to the time period for me in this movie is more the fashion and like the hair than the effects. Like, I think if you take the fashion and the hair out of the equation in this movie, the effects actually age very well. I would think I would have guessed more like 1998 than 1988. Mm. Honestly, I would have. But guessed, they don't even do. Yeah. I mean, like, I can't think of you know maybe Slither right mm-hmm. was yeah. a good example for something that used practical effects. Mm-hmm. You know, on this level, at least you know, uh, there's a lot of CG in Slither, but there there's is. a lot of stuff where they it, did a lot like, of practical, some, yeah, you know, gross yeah. practical in that. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Or great. maybe like the Evil Dead remake, you know, mm-hmm. sure, like yeah, gross really practical. practical too, yeah. But there's like a scene where Candy Clark's character is in a phone booth, and the blob like comes in and goes, you know, and just there, you if you did that in CG. It just, you know, it's like I can imagine what it looks like in CG, you know, in my head. But there's something about it that, like, that looks like fluid actually, you know, um, breaks into this uh, space and, you know, it behaves like fluid does. And overcomes her. Yeah. Yeah. And blasts her apart. Yeah. You actually see her go. It's like a half second cut or whatever. But I mean, we we talked about this a lot when we when we watched. um Fuck it. Oh, fuck. It was my pick. What the fuck was it? Uh, the, the, no, the, the, no, the Peter, the Peter Jackson oh, movie. Uh, oh, Dead Alive. Dead Alive. Thank you. We talked about this a lot in Dead Alive. Gross movie. (laughs) So great. (laughs) We talk about it a lot because there, there is something to it when you're watching a movie and you know that this grossness is actually there. Mm -hmm. Like it's actually a nasty set. Like there's just, you know, you can Mm. feel the grime. You can just feel it. You know, there, there's really something to that. You know, you watch a movie with CGI and you're like, well, it's a green screen. It's done on a computer. You you're not like you're you're not feeling it what it's you're like what ama- it's like to right, be you're there. You're not imagining what it exactly. feels like. Exactly. Exactly. It's like <coughs> didn't you and McGregor say at one point in time when they were making the Star Wars prequels like he was like, yeah, for two months I like stood on a stage and there was a backdrop and I looked at a tennis ball and then George right. said, and then George said, see you in three years at the premiere. Like yeah. saying like all the work yeah. is done in post basically. Exactly. So, like, I, I think it takes that, the romance. Out yeah, of it. exactly. Yeah. And um, I, I think like too the attention to detail in the blob in this movie really helps its realism. Like because mm-hmm. like we were talking about like the the original one, it's literally just like a one big like bulbous mass. Or in this one, it's got like tendrils. It's got like these pustules and sacks and like especially in like the phone booth scene like you see the detail in it when it's like it's got veins it's yeah. got veins yeah, yeah exactly and like, there's a scene oh. toward the end where it's coming after the Shawnee Smith character and it looks like something like 
like something splits and like this other yeah. you know, yes. fresher yes yes like, newer like, version yeah, yeah. like yeah. we're exposed to the like, air so yeah. 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 Yes. it broke out of its little like the that, it, that like scum, it comes out of a co- uh, out of like a that, cocoon like, like it's on top of milk when you heat it up in the oh my god like the skin on top of pudding yeah that it breaks out of that and comes at you just like oh god no that was such a great detail I loved that like it's been exposed to air but it also has like that whatever shellac you know when the uh because it does form at one point, I think we're in there in the sewer, it forms like a little mouth thing, mm-hmm. which yeah. looks like something out of that game Dead Space. It, like, yeah. Just like, mm-hmm. a, you know, but uh, it had a lot of the, whatever, KY jelly on it or whatever, because mm-hmm. you could see it and it was all, you know, stretching and like. Yeah, it had the like saliva streams yeah, the, and that, stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So it, it's a guy named Tony Gardner uh, was the makeup effects well, good job. artist good on job, this. Good job, man. Like, yeah. The guy from The Office? <laughs> <laughs> It's a Tony Gardner. There's the office <laughs> joke. Yeah. Just check him off. Could yeah. work Seinfeld into this somehow. You just did. Uh, no, uh, I wait, did. No, no, no need... I did because I said he was wearing the puffy shirt. Okay. So we need community. Community is the we need community. And Gilmore Girls. Maybe even Gilmore Girls. He was wearing the puffy shirt, but it had like a chef's apron kind of like closure over the top. It had three collars on that shirt. That was insane. So if you're playing pop culture reference, bingo. Yeah. We're hitting it. His shirt was incredibly distracting. Is that like because he's supposed to be the kid who's you know like the the less fortunate tracks, right? You know the impression is that his father is nobody knows who his dad is. Yeah. His Mom's a drunk, and so the, he's on secondhand. His clothes. address is probably one seventeen, like WS tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Was he wearing like is that a secondhand shirt? No, that's what doesn't make sense. It's like a designer it looks, shirt. It looks it like a rich like kid shirt. Yeah, like, like he tried really hard on the shirt. Maybe yeah. he saved up. All the time he was working on Moss's garage. Yeah, yeah. all the weekend. Time. All the weekends. He should be wearing a wife beater or a V-neck white t-shirt. That's it. He should be he wearing a white t-shirt. Yeah, exactly. he should not be wearing a fucking no. puppy Cigarettes shirt rolled up with in the fancy buttons. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it kind of really looked like a dentist shirt. shirt. Yeah, because it's got the clo- <laughs> like the closure on it makes yeah. no sense. Right, it, she like, should have short sleeves. And yeah, it, yeah, really right? Yeah. It, the closure was it was incredibly distracting in, for me at least in this very, movie. Yes, yeah, very distracting. Absolutely. He, uh, the there's also a bunch of um, I mean talking about the way the movie's structured or the rhyme of it or something. There's a lot of uh, Chekhov's uh, zipper. Chekhov's yeah. faulty zipper. Yeah. Yep. There's well, there, like every scene seems to have like a, a rhyme or reason to it. We yeah, have it does. Snow cats are introduced at the beginning of the movie because they're going to pay off at the end. He's going to try to make a jump with his motorcycle right. at the beginning of the mm-hmm. movie. He's going to actually make the jump yeah. to get away at the end. Big conversation about the movie that the kids want to go see. And that, but you're like, yeah, you're writing that off. Movie, yeah. And then they actually yeah, end up go. like, that's a good joke. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, but the best joke was probably the pharmacy. Yeah, because I did not shirt. see that coming. That was a long con. That <laughs> was work. That was, that was long, but it worked, Rip. man. Yeah, that that was worked. Yeah, but it, it it serves the purpose of introducing these characters. You know who they are, you know, just through their dialogue and interaction with each yep. other. But it's also setting up like this pretty. No, decent. it was it was perfect because it was seem it was seemingly pointless, and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, that came back. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, like two scenes later. Yeah, yeah. they will set it up here. <laughs> Pay it off two scenes later. That's confident writing. And it I is. Yeah. I liked yeah. it. <laughs> but I always just wonder, I mean, just like trying to figure out how these fuckers write this stuff. It's like, do you do like a draft? I mean, we're getting into the weeds here. Just stop me if I. But do you do a draft where you're like, yeah, and then, you know, he goes here, then he does this. And then like he has to get away. So he does a jump. That'll be dramatic. And like, you know what? We should actually go back, rewrite one of the earlier scenes and make him trying to do the jump in the beginning of the movie. So it'll pay off like later on, you know, like all that. I stuff, can see like, that planning. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can see that. Because I, I, I can't imagine. And again, this is my narrow mindedness, right? That you see those moments automatically when you're writing the movie. I think it's possible to see them, but I think it's for the majority, it's most likely what you said that, you know, they come back to it. They're like, oh, you know what? We should put this in at the beginning. Right. It's going to pay off later. It's a good intro for our character. Yeah. For what? Because we just come upon him out in the middle of the thing and he's just like, I can make that jump. And so he tries that. And then later on, Mm because I probably thought of the jumping to get away from things later on. Well, it also had to, you had to figure out how to establish his connection with the can man. 
Yeah. And the can yeah. man, we know he finds right. the, you know, the original movie says he finds a thing in the woods. How do you get flag into the woods mm -hmm. to meet the can man while well, he's practicing mm -hmm. a jump with his, with his bike? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like all that stuff is like, wow. I mean, <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of the brilliant thing. Cause I, I really can see them in a, in a room, like, like plotting this, you know, like brainstorming and, and workshopping it like on boards or something. I can see that just what you said, like, I like this, but how can we do it later? And they, they come up with these these solutions to link them together. Mm -hmm. You can see it coming together, and it's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. And it gives the movie so this kind of like, you know, reassured, uh, you know, it's like there's never, there's some movies where you go like, I don't really know where we're going here. Mm -hmm. Right. Or what's there's a clear plan in this. But that's not saying it doesn't have like a suspense. Oh, no. You yeah. Know what I mean, like, yeah. you as the audience may not know where it's going, but like the movie feels confident enough that like, the guys who wrote it know where it's exactly. going. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yes. And I think, you know, that's just one of those like alchemical things. It's like, I don't right. know. I respect it like crazy because yeah, I can't yeah, do for sure. it. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Can we I mean, talk about our leading lady a little bit? Because I think she's incredible. I love her. She, I, I think this was the first thing I'd seen her in. I, I, I really like uh, the way she is Before Armageddon? Is she in Armageddon? A deep cut for she's in oh, a scene, she's... one scene with Steve Buscemi in Armageddon. Do you remember the stand? Yeah, the TV with yeah. the actual red yeah. flag and all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's in the stand. Okay, what is she? Who is she in the stand? She. I haven't seen the stand in forever. I'm trying to think. She. I just remember her going crazy, and it, uh, I was like, I don't think that you're because she was like rah, 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 or something with like mm. as she chases. Was it the uh, handicapped, the mentally handicapped? Oh yeah, guy. oh the guy from uh, M -M -M Honey I Shrunk the Kids. It, uh, from Coach, was he from Coach? I thought he's from Bill Fager Baker, Fager oh. Fagerhaven. It's Fager it's Fagerbaki. Actually, I just learned that the other day. <laughs> that's his, that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, doesn't she meet up with him at some you point just... and they go to? Okay, <laughs> so, but she's most most famous <laughs> Sorry. from the movie Saw. Right? Yeah. She's Amanda We're talk. in Saw. Uh, give yeah. us a second. No, we but you I have your we community. Have to suss out. Can we? I no. was mostly talking about her character <laughs> in this movie. Okay, no, but <laughs> no, but for real, I'm going to give Colin a free space for the coach reference. Yeah, <laughs> the coach. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I'm you. surprised. But that, that's the free space in the middle of your bingo board. So check it off, coach. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So her character. Yeah, I loved her. I thought I found her very proto Sin uh, Sydney Prescott in a lot of ways. Like, yeah, her uh, persistence, no matter what was thrown at her, I found inspiring and, and, and uh, refreshing. Refreshing compared yeah. to a lot of, especially movies of this time. Yeah. So, and from from where she starts off to where she ends up, yeah, yelling at the fucking blob and just mm -hmm. blasting. Yeah, yeah, love it. Well, that's one of the jokes in the movie too. Is that when she gets stressed out, she swears at one point, and he's like, "Whoa." I mm -hmm. just never heard you say shit before. What mm -hmm. was that like for you? You know, like that mm -hmm. kind of interplay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, she comes off as like, she's a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. So, you're, you know, like she's not going to be like an action, uh, you know, save the day hero kind of thing. Yes. Expect, but yeah. moment of massive appreciation for a cheerleader in a horror movie that's not overly sexualized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank the fucking God. Well, she's that the was good amazing. Girl, though. Yeah. She's the Laurie Strode yeah. kind she of thing. Is, yeah. is, she's very Laurie Strode in that sense. She yeah. is. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But so I love not it. Sexualize I'll take her. it. She comes from a decent, you know, mm -hmm. like upstanding family unit or whatever. Yes. They don't even want the kids seeing uh, the garden tool massacre. Her little <laughs> yeah. brother. Yeah. 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 And I think when his Hockey mom has been over for months, <laughs> when his mom says that was a good joke, that was a good, that joke. Was a good yeah. joke. I appreciated that. I didn't know where we were because we were in that movie for yeah. that moment, yeah. which, I I, like, which I love. Yeah. Where they'll just put you into it and then bring you back out of it, yeah. show you where well, you you're are. Well, like the blob is in the woods or something. Yeah. At that point, yeah. They yeah. So they're in the woods. They're just like, oh, we're doing. They're like, oh, we're just a like, fucking random couple. So okay, like, why whatever. Is that guy doing the bushes up there? I don't understand what's going on. Yeah, isn't it a little late to be trimming the hedges? Yeah. That's pretty good. Does that, solid. But does that... I, okay, I know it's to get around copyrights, but it still drives me crazy. <laughs> like, to see inaccuracies like that in other movies. Like, like Christmas Vacation drives me fucking crazy for oh, when, when he comes yeah. out of the garage wearing the hockey mask and holding a chainsaw. I'm like, no, 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 no. No, uh, you're, you're so yeah, wrong yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another one that drives me fucking crazy is I love that 70s show, but there's an episode where they go to see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Kelso says something like, oh, she was just about to take off her shirt. And I'm like, 
does not happen in that movie. You're not watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, yeah. this like the writers so, have the no writers are going idea. for the, the joke, writer. and you're like, that's not yeah. factually yeah. accurate. Exactly. Yeah. You haven't even seen it, you sons of bitches. But it, I was okay with this movie at least, say, it's like saying it's the Garden Tool Massacre. So like at least they're yeah. like in on it. You know, yeah. like yeah, we can't say this is you know Friday the Thirteenth, whatever. You know. Yeah. But and it's at the end of the slasher movie uh, craze, probably in 1988. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically. it was starting yeah. to dip down. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, the even the family dynamic there that you were talking about. It's like mm-hmm. when when his mom, this little kid, what is he like, twelve, thirteen, yeah, probably, probably wants to sneak mm-hmm. out of the house, Maybe, go see yeah. the Garden Tool Massacre. She says, you know, it's like you're not going to go see that, and he's like, yes, ma'am. I'm like, what year is this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like you They're wouldn't just saying see what they have to. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but we even argue for another fifteen minutes and then mm-hmm. be like, because mm. that'd be a more modern take on yeah. it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, but I I appreciated her character too because I think uh, that's you know, well, both of them the way that they actually played it off. It's like you didn't have the uh, you know, it was like a unit, right? It was uh, ultimately Kevin Dillon and Shawnee Smith yeah. come together to fight the Blob, and. At certain points, they each save each other, and at certain points, they each deal terrible damage to the the alien entity, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of cool, you know. It's like a back and forth uh, um, partnership. Yeah, it's like a co op <laughs> yeah. video game yeah. at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I don't think I actually I can't even name another film off the top of my head. You can help me out where like it has that sort of dynamic, right? It's like usually there's you know. Action hero, right? And Somebody's taking charge, squeeze, you know. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Um, and also, I thought it was we'll interesting say Ripley and um, Hicks and Hicks. But come on, that's Ripley all the way. Well, that's very true. <laughs> Puts in a good effort, but yeah, it's Ripley. All the way. I was I was debating whether or not in my brain if the Don't Breathe trio counted, but I mean there is definitely a, a ringleader in that situation mm-hmm. though. So no, it's yeah, probably not. It yeah. Ends up being her. Yeah. Pretty much is. Uh, yep. Um, the other big change that this movie has over the old one was the uh, introduction. This is a well, we've already talked about it, but it's a spoiler, I suppose. Is that the blob isn't actually a space monster per se? It has been. Uh, it's a military experiment, yeah, or a scientific experiment that's gone bad. We learned that the meteor that yeah. landed is actually that's just the top of it. When they pull it out of the ground, it's a satellite. It was some kind of germ warfare or a virus that the, you know the NASA or somebody sent into space, and now it's come back down. So you have all these the villains of the movie end up being the scientists led by Joe Seneca. I think that's his name. He was in Silverado. Uh, uh, he is like leading the uh, the military guys in the hazmat suits. That guy just when he shows up <clears throat> makes me feel uneasy. Just because yeah. of the calming way he talks to them, mm-hmm. I'm just like, you're something, hiding something. Yeah, you're There's hiding something, something not right. You're being too nice to everybody yeah. at this point. I will say that conceit I I did not particularly care for because it sounds suspiciously similar to a George Romero movie of around the same time. I don't <laughs> want like you guys all seen a. I don't want to spoil it. So, but there's there's a George Romero movie at the same time that has a very similar premise that like movie? like something happens to a community and they're like, oh, it was a government thing that shouldn't have landed mm. here. Mm. So, I, I don't know. I've seen. I've like heard ten this story years before. earlier. That was yeah. But I yeah. mean, the, but even that, you yeah. know, the whole thing. But I guess it, it's a that's a big change in the the attitude, I suppose, of like the 1980s versus the 1950s. That's right? true. Yeah. Where in the 50s, it's like, basically, the adults are all there to protect you. The only thing is they don't listen to you, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so the movie is advocating, that, like, you know, kids are smart and intelligent and understand things that are going on that maybe even adults don't. Yeah. <clears throat> and this one is saying, like, basically, there's no one out to help you because the adults are all in on the, the thing. You know, at least the authority figures, for the mm-hmm. most part. Yeah. The sympathetic authority figure is the sheriff, and he's you know, killed early by the blob. So then you just have the evil authority figures who want to, you know, like the whole place is expendable as long as we get this, you know, germ warfare thing that we created. Yeah. And so it's like, a, it's a more like cynical um, take on it. Mm-hmm. It does mm-hmm. get there. Yes. Yeah. Fuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's some awesome like chases through the sewer. There are. There's, uh, I think they learn, they get trapped in a freezer at one point. It's got glue on the walls. 
Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, the, the one point in this movie where the design is not the greatest. But. Yeah, that freezer is hosed down with Elmer's. Mm-hmm. Very sticky. Hosed down. Mm-hmm. Yep, there's a reverend who was also oh, part boy. of the plot. Fucking creepy. Yeah, creepy everyone. preacher, priest, or whatever. Father. Yeah. yeah no, why is he so creepy? Just because mm, the actor they, they, they got. Teeth, oh, okay. He has like those saggy eyes. A gap and, like, in the teeth will make you extra and creepy. And he, he invades people's personal bubble when he's talking to them. He yeah. gets far too close to people. Yeah, he and got his re- eyes are too eager. Yeah. yeah. You don't, I would say. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> a good way of putting it. You don't get up in someone's face in a pharmacy and ask them how they're doing. And then you don't do that. Is it just pharmacies? It's are there other no, locations where I mean, you can't get up in someone's face? It's pharmacy specific in okay. this in this case, but it's it's many scenarios. But then he pulls the whole religious guilt trip of like, I haven't seen you at church in a while. Which yeah. Is like, that's a... that. If anyone ever says that to you... Just I don't say, believe fuck in Jesus, you. Father. Just say fuck yeah. you and walk the other way yeah. because no good can come of that. No. And if f- anyone ever says I haven't seen you at church in a while, they're up to no yeah. fucking good. You find an adult. Yeah. It's you like, oh, you're you're there. judging me right now, yeah. aren't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm leaving. Which is not their place. No. So you know they, they just, just want to encourage the you to come back to the flock by guilting you into it. That's yeah. bad leadership. I think that's how all of it. I mean, stuff come works. on. Most religions are built on guilt. Yeah. But if it, at least, we don't mean your religion, no Catholicism. Uh, but when, yeah. does the, when, does the guilt, you. when does the guilt cross into bullying and straight up shaming you into coming to church? Well, you know, like I mean, those are the foundations of Catholicism. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> but that also, I mean, again, it's, we're going back to the writing in that scene. It's like you know, it escalates it in a way, way that that you know the uh, the kids are or the, the guy's going to try and buy condoms. Yeah, but he doesn't. Uh, you know, so he goes up and then the, the preacher shows up. So that's, you know, it's mm-hmm. like he approaches the guy and then the preacher shows up. It's like, oh, what's going to happen here? And then, you know, he has to offload it to the, uh, this is, my, I'm buying them for my buddy or whatever, which pays off in our, yeah. our joke mm-hmm. grenade. <laughs> Fantastic. For me, I love it. The first of later. many grenades that are in this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lost boy in this movie. No, he's a frog brother. Frog, frog brother. brother. Shows up briefly. The other frog brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys know the movie Eraserhead? Yes. yes. Unfortunately. I, I know it. I've yes. never seen it. Did you see Eraserheads in this movie? What? No. He's the doctor. Is he really? Mm-hmm. Oh, Was shit. he? I did not notice that. Oh, nope. Didn't, yep, didn't Jack make Jack for like a good scene. <laughs> oh. I didn't notice that at all. There's a man dying in here. That's mm-hmm. it. Oh, God. Okay. Wow. All okay. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jack I didn't yeah. even notice that. Yep. Yeah. He's been in a bunch of David Lynch movies. Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to me there was something else I wanted to ask. What else we got in this movie that comes? Bill Mosley shows up. In the- oh yeah, yeah, that's right. We had Eric that- Elaine, former mm. playmate, playmate in Baywatch. Is Bill Mosley Baywatch? in the Wall of Fame down here yet? Is this I don't two? think we've seen enough. You, have you guys done Texas Chainsaw Massacre too? Or no, no, no. no? Oh, shit. So we this might not. be the only one. I think so because we haven't done any of the zombie, that's a damn shame. zombie movies. No, no, yeah. we we haven't done like. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3. That has <laughs> so nobody has been here for that one. Stay tuned. <laughs> Maybe, just for that headpiece he wears in that movie. Yeah, so we just have... Well, no, he's a two-timer, right? Repo? And oh, this? Yep, that's right. Mm-hmm. Repo close. doesn't count. One more and put what? them on he's the wall. He's in Repo, the genetic yeah, opera. I'm, yeah, I know. I'm saying the movie doesn't count. Well, We're just going to erase that. One more and puts him on, a, puts him on the wall, so... Yeah. So uh, let's take a, play a little guessing game. How much did this movie cost to make? It oh, yeah. looks expensive. Mm. I was thinking that. I was like, wow, this looks surprisingly big, big I'm gonna budget. Say Thirty million. I'm gonna say twenty-two. Mm, I was gonna say twenty-five. Mm. 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 All right. So nineteen eighty-eight <laughs> dollars. Like, what can we compare it with? We know that Rambo three was the most expensive movie ever made. At like, uh, what was that? Yeah. That was at like was seventy-five million. Or something at that time. Mm. All right, so this was a nineteen million dollar movie. That oh. seems about right. Nineteen million, yeah. 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 Which right. I'm trying to figure out is that like a big budget or a small budget? Chuck Russell maintains that was a small budget. I don't what, think what was it. What was big Not budget 80s. in the eighties? It doesn't seem 80s. small. It feels to me the big budget was like sixty million dollars. Yeah. If you can do down to a third of that, maybe that is small budget. Maybe that's how they broke it down. Like 90 I mean, million big budget, 60 yeah, million for this, middle budget, 20 for that million. Kind of, for a, a special million. effects heavy movie. You would think. That seems like that's mid budget, right? I mean, that's yeah, got to be more than these kind this, of effects. Yeah. yeah, yeah this feels bigger than, than this feels bigger than a small budget movie. Which would be like a Nightmare on Elm Street 3, right? 
That's this, a smaller, more contained movie. I mean, that's yeah. a bigger, like of the slasher movies, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies felt like they had a bigger budget, right? But yeah. Yeah. it's still this probably by Hollywood they standards, yeah. they were still low budget, yeah. probably. Right. But using, that's why I love, you know, these horror movies is they're like using every kind of creative aspect they can yeah. to like make it seem like it's more expensive than it is. And they do a lot of shit in these movies where just like, this seems like it costs a lot. They yeah. get mileage out of it. Like, they, yeah. do. they really do. They really do. You know, it's... I mean, here we are 30 years later talking about how good it looks, you know? So I think that $19 yeah. million was worth it. Yeah, um, well. we, was it? How much did this movie make, do you probably, think? No. Oh, I don't think it did well. It, it, it was not 15, the right time. I'm say it did $15 million. I'm going to say like eight. <laughs> Eleven. Eight million. Is- oh! Eight bravo, million dollars bravo. on a nineteen wow. million dollar budget. Bravo, bravo, bravo. It was a bomb, bomb. because apparently yeah. nobody wants to see a movie about called the Blob. I don't even know. Like when I was the a kid, not good. I knew there no, was another sorry. Blob, which I don't think I'd seen at that point in time. But I'm just like, I don't know. It just didn't have like a good ad campaign or whatever. <laughs> then they should never try and do this again. I don't think it's you should. Only going with that to title, Blum, I don't Blum, think Blum, Blum, Blumhouse could do it. Ah, but with that title, with that title, they, nobody's going to see it, though. Yeah, I think that's the they thing that has this. going against it. Here's how you do it: make the blob. <laughs> but, the glob. No, 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 no. You make the blob, and it starts off the normal, normal blob movie. Right, halfway through, it becomes an X Men movie about the character, the blob, <laughs> and that's right. how you're. It becomes a blob right. origin story. Yeah, we but just made it already. It was monsters and, and aliens. It leads into. Like an yeah. X Men movie, basically. We just made you five hundred million dollars. Now I love Fox. The idea. Hire me. I'll write it for you. <laughs> now, do you know about this before you go into the movie hmm. that it's going to turn into no. X Men? No. Good. I love the idea of the backdoor movie. Yeah, a secret. I X-Men love movie. the idea yeah. of it. I'll tell you about yeah. my secret Halloween movie one time okay. when we're off mic and everything. But okay. Okay. Yeah. I love the idea of the backdoor a, movie. A secret X Men movie. Because <laughs> that's no, great. Okay, let's it's be great. honest. If, the, if we're not going to go see Dark Phoenix, right? No one here is going to go see no. this, right? I might have to take people since no. I get in for free. Right, but you don't want to see it, right? I don't want to see no. it. No. We're, all, we're all done with that. I didn't see right? the last one. So we have to be tricked into it at this point. Yeah. You know? That'd be very true. Secret, secret X-Men movie. The Blob. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go in through the back door of the Brotherhood of Mutants, and then it becomes an X-Men movie. Mm-hmm. This, is the, I mean, this is Perfect. the avenue yeah. people should be taking yeah. certain movies nowadays. Mm-hmm. I mean, have we, have we even really talked about the fact that Ghostbusters 2 came out a year later? And oh, well. and used a lot of the same yep. slime technology. We didn't even get there, but yeah. I mean, yeah, because when he's poking at that meteor, I'm like, that looks like slime. And when and when the um when it's coming the, through the crack, they're in like the city hall or whatever, and it's starting to come up the house, and there's like yeah. the pillars. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is the fucking museum scene all over again, right well, the here. The question is, did Tony Gardner work on Ghostbusters too? That's think, something that we're gonna have he? to uh, to find out. Someone needs to look that up. <laughs> Well, was, I think it said there was somebody else who was like uh, creature effects. Because I mean, credited, it but. was it was kind of all over, like the like Ghostbusters to the fucking bathtub scene where it like reaches yeah. out. Yeah. That was mirrored from this very much. What's your favorite? Uh, well, hmm, how was I going to say this? Like, uh, it seems like in this era, in the eighties, there mm-hmm. were a lot of fifties movie remakes. Although I can now only think of four. I was gonna of say them. you'd need to have a list. Yeah. Me, otherwise, I will not. Well, I mean, the Night of the Creeps immediately came to mind. I love well, that. That wasn't a I remake love... though. Oh, but like yeah. the thing was a remake of a fifties movie. Right. Yep. yep. Uh, and the that's Fly a great was example. a remake of a fifties movie. Yeah. Right. Invaders from Mars was a remake of a fifties movie. The Blob was a remake of a uh, Invaders or Invasion of the Body, Body Snatchers. Snatchers came I was gonna out say. In the 70s. Yep. Remake of a fifties movie. Are there more? Maybe Listen, those are the good ones. I mean, I'm like five beers in, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those might be the good ones, and we're forgetting. The yeah, other. but I, yeah. I guess that's the thing. It's like this movie. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily. I don't know that you know a lot of people out there beyond you, good folks listening to us, mm-hmm. have really heard of the blob. But I think maybe they've heard of the thing. Oh yeah, I think you know. I think, I think people, people have heard of. The, I think people have heard of the blob. Maybe they so haven't too. seen it, I'm but sure I think they haven't seen it. I think but people I'm sure are aware of it. But you think they've heard of the blob? I you think yeah. they're aware that there's a yes. an '88 movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're like me, where they know it exists, but like up until two day, no one had told me it was worth watching. Right. Like no right. one had I literally ever even mentioned know, it to like, me. Like if you mention this, it's like the blob. Yeah. Because yeah, you know, their imagination will just go with it at that point. I think they know of its existence. But Whether yeah, they've seen it, yeah. probably not. But they know of the blob. Mm-hmm. If, you ma- yeah. if you make a joke about the blob, I think people would get there's a, it. There's a vague whisper of the blob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. not saying the right things. That's yeah. The thing. Yeah. 
Well, whether or not you should watch it, listener, is something that you're going to have to wait to so. find out because you think this has been a love fest, but I've been on this show before. <laughs> and you think every time either. before. <laughs> every single time before for 282 episodes. <laughs> He's been on this show yeah. before. That's right. I have never missed an You've episode. You've never missed an episode. It's Colin. your basement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, How are we going to do it? It's Igor's basement, okay? I mean, it's Igor's basement. But there was one time we tried to take it on the road, but we were going to do we it tried in We tried to take it on the car. road. We tried it in a van once. Yeah. That didn't work. Again, there's a power can't supply do, can't issue. Can't do without you, Colin. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good to know. So, <laughs> first of all, before, and we hope you'll stick around because we are going to voice our opinions on the blob. But first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail by summoning our mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got a gross tentacle out of his back that was not there before. (laughs) Guys, we should probably get that checked out, maybe cut off. We usually take him to the doctor and get those trimmed. Yeah. We forget well, his last appointment. Yeah. Get a tentacle neuter. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like getting, you know, it's like getting his nails done. It's really long. Um, just like, it seems it like we missed a couple. Like, he it's, may like have been hiding. The, it's like dragging on the ground behind him. He, you know? yeah. uh, he, he, he dissolves into a puddle before he gets to the stairs. Yeah. Uh, just, wait, wait, he left the mail. Wait, let me get it. No, it, it'll, it'll crystallize it'll, and fall off. That may be really That's for me. Oftentimes, I'm handed this letter and it's dripping with something. Is now it it's dripping? smoking. Is it usually drippings with goo? <laughs> Why am I drippings with goo? <laughs> so, before I read these, we should probably tell the listener how they can get a hold well, of us I because you want to write to us. You want to tell us like where Lovers Lanes are and you want to tell sure, us what your fa- favorite 50s What's your favorite Lovers Lane remake yeah. is. Uh, yeah. So they can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. So up tonight. Mail. First of all, XMonkey76 writes not legal in. paper this time. No. And says, no. <laughs> that, not the scroll I that know. you promised last week. I was week. waiting for some parchment. <laughs> X, how do you come up? How do you get to a name like XMonkey76? Well, born in 76. So, social media is out of handles. Okay, so X. You have to come up with something. All right. XMonkey. I mean, hmm. okay. X monkey Are 76. Are you a former monkey? X monkey now? Right. And you just were. <laughs> oh, X monkey. Oh. I would give you more credit if you were X monkey now. <laughs> <laughs> that would, yeah, that'd be better. <laughs> Maybe X Monkey seventy six has nice things to say about it, Sean. <laughs> and I shouldn't yeah. make fun Don't of him. Don't trash before. his name, God. Thank or you for her. Ri- or, or her. her. Yeah. Thank you, person, for writing in. <laughs> I still love X Monkey now. <laughs> <laughs> well, X Monkey seventy six writes in and says, "I really enjoy the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast." <laughs> Thank you. We I'm sorry enjoy you. you. <laughs> we enjoy you thoroughly. Oh, there's more to Thank this. You. This, this was a review on iTunes. That's right. Oh. You can go look it up. Wow. Uh, uh, it says they choose fun movies to review and seem to have a blast doing so. Their comments are insightful and they seem to have a healthy or unhealthy appreciation of canon films. Hmm. <laughs> I look forward to each review every week on my drive to and from work. They're a great group and I can't wait to see what they do next. Thank you for all the fun. That's see, awesome. That's see, so sweet. Thank you so much. Do you feel thank bad you, now? I, no, no, thank you very much in my... And no, just our humor. No, that and just in the humor. person that I am, it I feel like it's like a bot. Yeah, like I never, I, know, I can't I'm like, accept. This one's a plan. I can't accept. You guys. Right, I can't accept. <laughs> I was the good it's feelings. Fake. I'm and like, reviews. that's not real. It's fake. Yeah, like I love you for doing it, but it always feels like this. It can't yeah, be real. we're we're insecure, so we assume yes. it's fake. That's, something. That's there's something the wrong with me, not yeah. you, no, reviewer uh, no. who has like, it's it's our us and love us. We Thank need, you. We need, I am broken. We yeah. need the praise, but we can't accept it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's it. Um, but thank you for the. We candy. love you. Thank you so much. We love I you for writing it. in. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm, I'm gonna read it again and cry about it later. So thank <laughs> you. I, I would say unhealthy obsession with Canon. I would say it's unhealthy. <laughs> oh, definitely. Did you hear? Canon's not good for your. Did you listen to the over the top episode? Yeah. Yes. It's unhealthy. I mean, guys, I dressed up for that episode. It's not. It's not healthy. We arm I, wrestled. Bu- I bought Cobra the other day. We arm wrestled. Yeah. Did you? Oh, I sweet. Did. You <laughs> bought <laughs> Cobra. I got it in like a triple pack of Stallone movies. But Ooh. Okay. Fantastic. Ooh. It's about time. What, what Everybody should have a copy. Were in there? Uh, a a specialist. 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 Oh, Cliffhanger? No Cliffhanger? No. No. Oh, no, it was like it had to have been It's Warner Brothers Yeah, movies. Warner Brothers. Yeah. Uh, about the blob, Jace, Jacob Kotner says, the blob 
is an absolute delight. This is how a remake should be done. Amazing effects and great direction. The blob, the, the blob in this film is brutal. And when it kills the kid in the sewer, you know this yeah. movie means business. And speaking of business, Kevin Dillon's mullet is the real star of this movie. That's business. If by star you mean it should not be here? Yes. <laughs> That mullet. We were all thoroughly bothered by the mullet. All except for me, kids. apparently, because I'm more forgiving of age. Because you had a fucking mullet, Con. Right. You, you lived it. We didn't. You lived yeah. it. That's right. Sean's That's right. A Basement of tolerance, damn it. We will tolerate. <laughs> well, yes, we, we'll styles. tolerate it, but we'll still point it out. That kid but, getting killed in the sewer was... Awesome. I no, I yeah. love. A I'm horror, all for yeah. that. I love a horror movie that's not kill afraid a kid. to kill a kid. Yeah, I especially love it. in like especially a gross slime. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was annoying. He was annoying. He got dissolved, which yeah. he deserved. He did. <laughs> Sean, you made a good point though that Kevin Dillon does look like Sigourney Weaver. He in does. He, he looks really like does. Sigourney Weaver in this movie. He that really haircut does. is the same. But we'll see if anybody else says that. Well, I suppose they already kind of did. Nick Siebel writes in and says, "Wow, such an underrated '80s horror film. Still amazed at how good the practical effects held up. I also like the twist toward." the end talk about the yeah. military uh, no ah, yeah it was good choice. okay uh sean roger writes in says it's a fantastic movie fantastic remake one of the few movies that actually made sense to remake mm, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Probably. i would say so i'll go with that uh benevit 1979 says i've been waiting for you guys to do this one the wait is over my friend yeah <laughs> you wait no more DJ Mathis 12 says this movie's effects are still great and the guy getting pulled down the sink scene is such a great kill. <laughs> I is. love this movie. Yeah. The fully work when his head gets sucked. It crunches <laughs> man, like, The crunch really oh. grossed me out. I didn't like it. It was like, great. <laughs> it bothered me. Uh, Groovy Doom says mm. the 1988 blob is great stuff. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah dude. Stuff. 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 Yeah. We, no. stuff. Uh, stuff. I have never seen no, the stuff. It's, I have. I swear if any of you bring it I will be sick that week. So. <laughs> Kayla, you have to learn not to say things like that. <laughs> that <laughs> You're just, challenging him. Yeah. That just Because I will bring it. <laughs> that might and be I next week's movie. Next week. And I will tell stuff. those two that I'm going to say something else. <laughs> and then I will bring the stuff and you will be the only one that is surprised. Uh, yep. Uh, like Tony, I said, that will be sick next week. You won't so, know until you, know. you show up. Yeah. Tony Genoway writes in and says, I have the Criterion release of The Blob. Nice. And I, love it. I, so I knew the, there was a Criterion release. Well, that's a 58 one. I know, yeah. but yeah, I knew there was a Criterion release. It's got some beautiful one. artwork, too. Yeah. He says he loves it as campy fun. I mm-hmm. less obvious, A less obvious one I dig is the 1988 Not of This Earth remake of Roger Corman's 1957 yeah. film. He's an executive producer. Credit on the latter also. Mm. Interesting. I have not yeah. seen that. I haven't, I haven't seen that. Seen, I that's the one with Tracy Lords, the remake. The wow. This Earth, okay. But I haven't seen the 50s. I haven't seen either one of them, actually. So but I'm curious. I was on a Roger Corman cake oh, for a little while. Uh, Steve Coat, 1974, writes in and says, 50 sci-fi meets 80s trash with plenty of gore. I remember seeing this movie in 1988 and didn't appreciate it as much as I do in 2018. This is a great monster movie remake. Hilarious and horrifying sci-fi horror flick. Mm, yeah. yeah. Solid, man. Yeah. I mean, we'll get to it in wrap-ups, you know? Yeah. And about our last week's, ep- or two weeks ago, what was the last week? Samurai Cop? Two weeks ago. Two weeks Samurai ago. Cop episode. Novato Judoka yeah. says, "Let the samurai cup, let the samurai cop love never stop." I mean, yeah. I'd be down to watch the second one. So, <laughs> knowing Tommy Wiseau is in the second one, one I oh, oh yeah, yeah. He posted the picture. Oh, yeah. yeah, Tommy Wiseau is in the sequel, dude. Yeah, samurai cop. Is that him holding up the sword? No, no, oh, no. Damn it. Uh, didn't we watch the trailer? No, here? Sean was not here. I was not here for Samurai. Unfortunately, that looked right up my alley. It's um, awful. Uh, your, I think your mind would no, have exploded. Sean, you would have been so angry, your brain would have exploded. <laughs> like, yeah, you <laughs> would have been like, "Why are there no samurai cops in yeah, this movie?" Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. 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 I exactly. tried to do that on the podcast. <laughs> Actually, yeah. you should just edit that into. You know, the <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, thank you, Sean, for stopping by and yelling at this movie. Yeah, yeah. and then you would have been like, "What is the point of this movie?" It would have been your other. Your other it's yeah. called Samurai Cop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Can you do a, what is the point of this movie? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm and dick. and with Ta-da. and with all that, I was so sad that you weren't here. <laughs> yeah. I, I really wish I had been. There was definitely people in that movie that did not know they were in that movie. There was some footage shot where people did sure. not know they were in a movie. Mm-hmm. Those are the best ones. Well, in case you're still here about the blob, now is the time. We're gonna go around the room. You're gonna find out what we thought of it, starting with Sean. I was gonna say I can't say my own name. 
I was drinking. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what did you we're, think of the blob? We're all drinking. Oh. Sean's drinking. <laughs> uh, also drinking. Uh, Steve Coat, 1974. Uh, you, your first uh, sentence in this, your uh, review of the blob, uh, it's kind of perfect. Uh, 50s sci-fi meets 80s trash, uh, and that's pretty great description of this yeah. movie. Yeah. With plenty of gore. Um, this movie is really fun. Yeah. Like I was, uh, I hadn't watched this movie in a long time. I'm pretty sure I've seen it once before this, um, but uh, and that was probably like off 10, 15 years ago. Um, but it's a really fun movie. Um, I love, like we said earlier, I love the effects in this movie. I love how it feels. You know. Um, the, uh, the what they're doing in this movie with the blob and kind of like what they're doing when they composite the blob into the scenes, um, it just gives it kind of like the otherworldly feel. It feels like that old school special effects stuff. Um, I love what they do. Uh, a lot of this stuff still stands. It holds up to this day. Um, they're just killing people left and right in this mm -hmm. movie with the blob. And I'm like, I'm all yeah. for it. Like, if you got a movie where you could just have a giant blob going through the town, like, just fucking kill people. Yeah. Like, go for it. And the they stakes do it. are great. Yeah. It, it really is. You're, it's it's unexpected. It's surprising, um, which is what I want if I'm going to watch a movie like this, especially from something from the 80s. Mm -hmm. From something from the 80s. To be able to do something where I'm just like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Like, w especially with this, like, this group who's seen a bunch of this stuff, and we kind of, like you said, we know the formulas, we kind of know where they're going. For them to surprise us like this, uh, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it is gory. I love the death scenes in this movie. Um, I love that people just die left and right. The effects, I think, are, I mean, I, I say they hold up, but, you, you know, you can obviously see the seams in them, but I think... Like we said, adds to the charm of this movie. Um, it's really fun. Um, I, I recommend the hell out of the Blob. Uh, yeah, I want to. Uh, I'd watch it again. I kind of want to see the original Blob just to like. It's worth a watch. Just to see it. Yeah, it's worth I a think watch. It's probably really worth a watch. But uh, 1988's Blob. Uh, is, I mean, Kevin Dillon is a big is a big minus for this movie. Just his hair alone, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and his face. <laughs> it's a good point. His face but, is uh, very punchable. Re it really is, and I really don't so punchable. Oof. But other than that, everybody else is great in this movie. I just love what they do with this, and it's uh, it's a fun watch. So you know, if you're in for that, um, yeah, I recommend it. It's great. I had fun, Michaela. Oh uh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you, Sean. Uh, I think that there are certain movies that we watch on the show that kind of hit like a like a higher percentage for me of like so good. How did I miss it? How did I go yeah. this long without seeing yeah. it? And for me, that's like Night of the Creeps and like My Bloody Valentine mm -hmm. are definitely up in that rank of like, this is so good. How did I miss it? And not only that, but it becomes a part of like my tradition of like, it's my comfort blanket of like when I want something 80s and horror <laughs> that's like really fun to watch, what do I go to? And this is definitely entered into that same group as those movies for me. I I can't believe I went this long without seeing it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why no one has told me this is worth watching. <laughs> yeah. Like I feel like I feel like I've never come across anyone in my life that has told me to ever watch this movie and I don't know why that is. Like I, th I think yeah, it no just I, th I think it just proves that a lot of people have missed this movie. I think yeah. so. Yeah. No yeah. one's walking around going, you should watch the blog. Well, I'm yeah. hearing a lot of like chatter about it <clears throat> recently, but I don't know if it's, it's because the anniversary, the anniversary is mm -hmm. coming but yeah. within the last like year Mm -hmm. You hear people mentioning mm -hmm. the blob. The effects are great. They hold up over time. I loved our leading lady and our heroine. I thought she was great. I thought she was a nice moral compass throughout the movie. And But at the same time, it was still interesting because sometimes yeah. a moral compass can be a real wet blanket and not be fun to watch. And she managed to be a moral compass and still be fun to watch and still be mm -hmm. like someone you want to root for. And yeah, who doesn't I, love Shawnee Smith? Yeah, exactly. She was great. I really loved her in this. I, like start to finish, like even though they introduce her as a cheerleader, she's not a ha hateable person. Right. Mm -hmm. Even from the, off the yeah. bat, I thought she was great. Um, She's great in Becker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Becker. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree with Sean. Uh, the best way you can put it, yeah, Kevin Dillon, unfortunately, is a big minus for this movie, which is a shame because if you think about it, you replace him with literally anyone else. It would be a better movie with yeah. better chemistry. Uh, better and Kevin, better, like Kevin yeah. Bacon or something. Kevin, Kevin Bacon, <laughs> fucking love it. I would love to see that movie. It's so funny because I feel like Kevin Bacon could be interchangeable with, with Kevin Dillon. I feel like he turned Maybe. this down. Like, he's got better hair. Like and he almost kind of looks like him, too. Yeah. Like... I'll I feel go with like that. They were like, I feel like Kevin Bacon said no, and right. yeah. they were like, "But well, what if it Kevin was Charlie Dillon. Sheen?" Yeah, that's yeah, fine. That would take, be I would better. take it. I'd take it. Eighties Charlie Sheen, we like. I liked the yeah, Wraith. Yeah, I don't better. know if you guys remember. I recommended the I know. Wraith. So, so he ended she up really in the like, Wraith, yeah. and Kevin Dillon ended up yeah. in the Blob. Ooh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would. No. Take, I would there there should have been a better option. Just switch those two parts. He just has a face that says you can't trust him, and it doesn't work, and it's just not good for this role. Yeah. Um. 
And it's not the entourage poisoning. It's just his face. It's really his face. Is. But I, I really, I definitely recommend this movie. It's it's gorier than you think. The effects hold up better than you think. The story is better written than you think. The characters are more dimensional than you think. It's just not what you think. So definitely watch it. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm so mad. No one ever told me to watch this movie. <laughs> but you know now, and but that's now the part. That's now the important you have thing. To yeah. tell and now I have to tell everyone. Else. Yeah, and I will definitely buy this movie and own it because I could definitely see myself watching it again. It's not too sure. expensive. The umbrella disc was like I don't know. It was under twenty bucks. It's unfortunate that the like cover artwork doesn't isn't good enough. That's the poster. Yeah, that was the. It's not good poster. enough. It's. This was the video box art. Right yeah. There. Oh, that's that's a little better. That's, that's a little. I better. like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. But Holly, what did you think of the blob? Yeah. No, I'm I'm just echoing everything you guys have said. I uh, the writing was fantastic. The gore was fantastic. I loved everything about this goddamn movie mm-hmm. except for Kevin Dillon. Yeah. <laughs> and his stupid face. <laughs> I hate his fucking face. But I loved everything else about this movie. It was so much fun. It it was. It was never boring, which is a big problem with a lot of these 80s movies. But I I love a creature feature, and this delivered everything I wanted. It was so much fun to watch. This is easily one of my favorite movies we've watched on The Freak Show. I loved Same. it. Whoa. Definitely, yeah, great. definitely yeah. recommend it. I'm going to watch it. I'll probably buy it. Definitely mm-hmm. watch The Blob. I'm still, I'm still having a hard time believing that there was no... Uh... Uh, what you said, liquid involved with the actual blob. And yeah, you know, like that. It's incredible. That's, that's incredible. This is as far as I know. I don't know about every scene, but sure, I'm sure there was something added somewhere. But that's crazy. We forgot to mention there was a credits ballad that was incredible. Oh, the there was ballad, like a power ballad. At the oh yeah, end power by, ballad yeah. by yeah. Alien. Yeah. yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> I went out and purchased that album. I would too. And there's it's one great. other song uh, yeah. off that album uh, in the uh, the scene in the car. With Erica Alini. Yeah. Uh, there's a song from Alien. No, you, th- you think like, oh, this movie's giving me everything I want, and then the credits roll, and you get a fucking awesome power ballad. And you're like, power yes! Ballad. Yeah. Right. This they, fucking movie. Yes. Yeah. So much yes. I know, and they all should start out, like, you want to go, like, to black, and then... Yeah. Into your song. Oh, we forgot to mention that the priest, he gets burned, he ends up... Do we say that he... No, we didn't. The coda to the movie after they freeze and kill the blob yeah. is that he t- has taken some of the frozen he bits. He took samples of the frozen bits, and then he's having this like fucking tent revival, tell, telling everyone it's yeah. going to be the end of the world. It's all Pentecostal and shit, which I kind of loved. Yeah. And he's all scarred, and his hair's long all long hair, and scraggly, yeah. and he's got like a one eye with weird glasses. And I was like, I finally like the priest. Yeah. This is the priest I wanted the whole movie. It's great. Yeah, that was a solid ending. And he's waiting to unleash yep. uh, he's the got apocalypse. The, yeah. Where's that he's got sequel? The blog. Where's blog. that movie? All right. Yeah. Don't watch that. Well, the if you only make... Two, the blobbing. If you only make $8 million, <laughs> apparently a sequel yeah. is not in the cards. I'll write it. Yeah. I'll no. write it for very cheap. That was great. I loved that ending. It was yeah. great. Well, I love this movie, and it's always been one of those things where you bring a movie that you love in the freak show, <laughs> and things go horribly wrong. Everyone yep. sh- but everyone mostly shits for you, on it. Colin. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly yeah. for and you. And you nailed mostly. it, Colin! Yeah, but I was like, I was kind of, a, you know, like, I was like, man, I don't think it's going to be that bad on this one, because I think this is a legitimately good movie. A lot of times, you you know, I also bring movies that's like, well, I like it, but this is not really a good movie. But we were audibly <laughs> yep. reacting yeah. to this yeah. movie in a positive you way. nailed yeah, it, yeah. dude. Yeah. I, I, there's not a whole lot more like this. Night of the Creeps is probably yeah, the last Night one. I'm like, they fun. haven't seen Night of the Creeps. Nope. They gotta yeah. see that's Night actually like a good fun. movie that nobody that was, fucking I knows fucking about. I love that movie. Um, and that's the greatest tragedy tragedy about this film is that um, <clears throat> nobody nobody it. knows about the fucking no. thing. It seems like I think in horror circles, obviously, and if you listen yeah. to this movie, you know you probably <laughs> have heard of the Blob, and maybe you love it. We had a lot of people writing yeah. in about it. Which that was a uh, surprise me the volume of people. Yeah. Uh, so there is a lot of cult love for the Blob, but I don't think you know beyond it's not you know uh, uh, heralded on the level of like the thing, uh, which is the other one. I think that you know it's like it's, it feels like it's one of those good remakes. There's some remakes where I think it feels like they're better than the original. Mm. I think the Fly is better than the original Fly. Mm-hmm. The original thing is good. I prefer the John Carpenter one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know which one's better, but the John Carpenter one is more appealing to me and is, you know, that's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, I think the 70s Body Snatchers is better than the old one. And this may be heresy, but I think the Evil Dead remake is better than the original Evil Dead. I I would agree with that, honestly. Mm -hmm. I really love it. I'm not seeing Evil Dead 2. 
No, just the original. Yeah, Dead. I agree. Yeah, I actually really love the remake. I think it's a fantastic it's movie. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I think that one will also grow in you know in the years to come, hopefully. Um, but yeah, there's uh, and you know the other thing we didn't talk about uh, is the uh, I mean you know you guys were talking about that it's a fun horror movie. I think when I think of like the fun horror movies of the '80s, this is one of the first things that comes to my mind because it never gets. Um, really the characters don't have like uh horribly you know off putting you know even the villains you know or anything the authority figures that are running in opposition it's like there's nothing really that you know kind of drags you down to this like Ugh. well maybe the date rape uh, scene <laughs> yeah. or, which it wasn't date rape okay but it was close like was, on the fucking was, edge of that it was going that direction yeah, it but it going, corrected itself yeah, the blob, it corrected the blob it. Yeah. it was because i think that's how yeah. 80s movies would do it it's like it's yeah. a sin factor and like you are punished for you know even having the idea <laughs> blobbed right mm-hmm. um blobbed <laughs> you get blobbed you know <laughs> It's yeah, now. but it has this like Spielbergian ending uh, where, you know, the 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 way they defeat the blob is by exploding a um, uh, one of the snowmakers. It's a, uh, uh, it makes fake avalanche, you know, yeah. snow for skiing because yeah. it's a ski town. Right. Yeah. And they explode it and it blows up. And so you get like the snow in the air and everything. And the blob turns into this crystalline yeah. it's very thing. Pretty. <laughs> and it's like, and everybody, it's and then alive. all the families come out and they're hugging each other. And I'm like, this is how <laughs> you a, ended movies a movie at the in the it. 1980s. It's like, ah, it's we snowing. beat that thing. Everybody's hugging and, you know, it's snowing. Ah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Tugs at the heartstrings. Well, um, <laughs> But I, all of these components, yeah, I just think I love uh, the writing. I think the writing is more clever than it needed to be, and it made me a fan of uh, Frank Darabont. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The direction, I think, is good. What they got away with in the visual effects, I mean, yeah, the blob's a complete package. If you haven't seen it, you got to go out and track this thing down. And I think part of the reason why a lot of people <laughs> haven't seen it is because of its unavailability. It's like hard to fucking find. Yeah. At least on disc. I think it's on like Hulu or something. Sure, You'd probably but that's, rent it. Does somebody to go rent it on Hulu or something like that? That's I, I feel make like more effort than and especially like I feel like in the eighties to early nineties, the assumption was all remakes are bad. So I think that kind of comes you know, that come unfortunately gets attached to this too. They're like I don't. I don't think Ugh, the blob brings that? about Ugh. brings about an urgency to watch it. Yeah, just by the title. Just by the title. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think anybody's the like blob. that. I don't think that like, the blob. Uh, I don't think yeah. that interests people right off the mm. bat. So they're just like, eh, whatever. They yeah, because the first one was that. a camp classic. Yeah. Think, yeah, you know, kind of. You know, it was amusing, and I think the reason that. I mean, the blob, the original one, was obviously a thing to drive in audiences or whatever kids yeah. in the fifties, and then it be- gained some notoriety because it was like superstar Steve McQueen was in this, you know, his first movie was yeah. this cheesy science fiction movie where he fought a fucking big bowl of jello. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you know, and that theme song that you played earlier. So <laughs> yeah, I think it's more like it's a camp cult hit than like a real movie movie where this one's like a real movie. movie yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, I would say uh, you got to check blob. check out the blob. That's a that's a freak show recommendation. Yeah, by the way. it's it really all around for episode two eighty two. Enthusiastic recommend. Enthusiastic so. recommend. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, all right. So, well done, Colin. Well thank done. You thank Great you pick. Yeah. 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 Better than repo. But what is it? So, <laughs> <laughs> not gonna let that go, are you? Never. <laughs> never. He made me sit through movie. it. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, uh, so next week. We're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Sean! <laughs> what are we going to be watching next week? He uh, doesn't even know. Right now. No, he we're doesn't gonna eat, know. No, we're going to eat weird. Oh. We're going to oh. eat Italian. Oh, oh, God damn oh it. I no. I brought this on myself. No. We're going to watch Shocking Dark. Oh, okay. Shocking, Shocking Dark. Dark. A.K.A. Terminator 2. What? Oh, you guys have no idea what you're in for. Shock, what? So you're speaking a foreign language uh, right now. What I am Italian. Shocking. You Who, just From what wait. year? 1970. <laughs> you know, director, <laughs> shocking. This uh, sounds familiar. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh, oh, what's his name? I forgot his name because it's Italian. It's got to be the 80s it. if it's doing the it's, Terminator. Yeah, movies. definitely 80s. Yeah. Shocking. It's, dark. Uh, wait, what? No. T- what year was Terminator? 84. The first one was 84. 84. So this came out in I think 85 or 86. Okay. All right. 
as a sequel to Terminator. I can't oh, wait. Oh, boy. For some Shocking reason, I'm dark. thinking of like Lady Terminator, some Indian thing, but this nope. is Italian. Okay. This is Italian. All right, well, I've always wanted to see for Shocking real dark. treat. I think, and I also think <laughs> Dom, Dom is really going to appreciate this I, next I'm, pick. I'm not going to lie. I have a hard enough time remembering what we're going to watch. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to remember this. No, no won't. I won't remember it all. No. Nope. All right. Shocking dark. Shocking, so, shocking dark. dark. Mystery movie is what Let's we're watching do it. next yeah. week for me. I can't Mystery wait. movie. Yeah. I have heard the title. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I know where We've I mentioned heard it. it before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's uh, next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going down.